Hey guys, Nick here, and welcome to my spoiler free review of the brand new DC film Justice League. Um, I got to see an advanced screening of it thanks to my fiance, and um, so I just got back from seeing it a little bit ago. And um, I know that there's been a lot of you know talk about the movie in the last few days, especially since you know, obviously it's the week of release and you know the critic reviews and stuff like that. Um, and I want to say this, you know, I say this in front of every DCEU movie pretty much since Batman v Superman. Um, take the critics, what the critics say with a grain of salt. I know it's easy for us as DCEU fans to be like, you know, like, fuck critics. You know, I've had that same kind of mentality. Um, but for me, I just, just... But the one thing I can say is go in with an open mind. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. That's fine. Um, the one thing I just hate people doing is jumping on the bandwagon for the sake of jumping on the bandwagon. And... In throwing hate on Zack Snyder's because he made a movie they didn't like. I've gone on that in the podcast several times about why, why I hate people who do that. Um, so I just wanted to say that up front. Um, but do you have my thoughts on the movie itself without spoiling anything, of course? Um, I really enjoyed the movie. I, I, I loved it. Um, there, there are some flaws. I'll admit that. Um, the runtime being one for me, um, that's not a Zack Snyder issue or even a Whedon issue. That's just, that was a studio mandated issue. Um, I hope we get a director's cut or extended cut at some point. That's more of Zach's vision and more of a, more of a laid out story, if that makes sense. Um, the story within the movie wasn't bad. I just wish it took, time, took more time to flesh it out a little more. Um, Cause I can, I can tell that it was um, like, the, this, like the plot of the, the main plot like happened, like it starts very quickly. Um, so there's no sort of like real build up. It's kind of like, oh, well, this happens and the league's coming together, which which is fine. But I just wish there was a little more time to develop that part of the story. Um, as far as the characters go, I think they were all handled great. Um, I loved, I, I think the standout character for me was Cyborg. Um, and that's awesome because Ray Fisher, he's been like hyping everyone up for, I would say, years now. And I get, he, just because he wasn't like a huge actor this is like his first really big feature film role um other than a small part in, in batman v superman i think he did an amazing job in the role of cyborg being really the emotional heart of the story and i really think that what he was able to do with the character really made me really enjoy what he was able to do with him and i and the cgi all at first when i saw the um first behind not the, not the behind the scenes look but the first look from comic-con last year in 2016 I was a little worried about the CGI of the character, but in the in the movie itself, I really just loved how he looked, and I didn't really mind it because I feel like that's the by the time like I would even start to pay attention, it just seemed like it fit naturally within the movie, and I didn't really care. It looked great for me. Um, there's the emotional layers that character had and his relationship with his father Silas Stone in the movie. Um, I think of all the new characters introduced in this movie. I think his character was the most fleshed out, and I think that's one of the reasons why I love him so much. Um, and as far as, you know, like, Flash goes and Aquaman goes, um, I love this Momoa as Aquaman. I knew I would. Um, not, not from, like, the, from day one, because day one, I'll admit, you know, I wasn't the biggest supporter of it because I didn't really know too much about Jason Momoa as an actor. I hadn't really seen any of his movies or anything, so I wasn't sure what to expect. But for me, I loved him as Arthur Curry. I think he did a great job. I do wish there was more of him doing more aquaman -y things um there, there's a lot of great action seasons with, with him there's no doubt and he's a great character i just wish there was more i wish that they did more with his character than what they did not that they did anything bad i just wish there's a little more to it and i i feel like there was but there's just stuff that was cut out to make it the two hour um runtime um now flash is a character that you know um i really I'm not saying anything bad, but for me, I just there were some jokes I feel like were just didn't have to be there, and I feel like that was more of the script and the reshoots from Whedon, not necessarily on Zack Snyder's side, because um, I feel like the studio was trying so hard for this movie to be more of a lighthearted and comedic movie than past DCEU movies. Um, I feel like Wonder Woman was that movie for me, at least, so I can be like, oh hey, if you're if you're not if you, if you don't like the darkness of the DCEU, Wonder Woman is more for you than say. Batman v Superman, um, Suicide Squad, or even Man of Steel. Man of Steel, I don't think it's that dark of a movie, but people love to say that it's dark and gritty and grim dark and all that stuff. But for me, 
like the lightness of this movie. There were moments, like, like I said, that like humor sometimes didn't work. There was one scene in particular between Martha and Lois that had one of the absolutely the worst lines in the movie. I'm not gonna spoil it. It's not, it's not a spoilery scene. It's just very weedy dialogue, and it was just it was meant to just be funny. And I, th I found it very unfunny, and frankly, just a stupid line. Um, now, as far as the the villain goes, Steppenwolf, um, kind of what you see is what you get. He wasn't a bad villain, in my opinion. He was just he did did his job as a villain. Um, the one thing I'll say about the movie itself um, is that thing it felt like because it was two hours, it flew by really quickly. So the third act felt like really, really flew by. So by the time the the ending of the movie happens, it felt like oh, like that that's it. Like I, I was expecting more just because it's a Zack Snyder movie, and I, I expected it. I, I feel like I'm like expecting it to be longer, even though I knew it was gonna be two hours. Um, and that's where I feel like when the final battle with Steppenwolf happens, I was. Not shocked, but it just felt a little weird because it flew by as quickly as it did. Um, and Steppenwolf, again, was fine. I love the setup with him and the history of him with the Amazonians, Atlanteans, and humans. They've been there all coming together to help beat Steppenwolf and the Parademons. I thought the Parademons looked cool. It was cool to finally see them in live action. I mean, yeah, we saw them for a bit in Batman v Superman. Um, it was cool seeing them it, to this degree in this movie. Um, a lot of the side characters were great. The introduction of Mira was good. Um, I wish I saw a little more of her. Um, Commissioner Gordon I thought was really cool. Um, of course, my favorite parts of the movie, if you guys know me at all, you guys know I'm a diehard Superman fan, and especially of, of this iteration of Superman, I love what they did with Superman in this movie. I will say, there's been the whole thing about Henry Cavill's mustache being having to be CGI and all that stuff about the movie. There are a couple of instances where the CGI, at least to me, was really obvious on, like, around his mouth when he was talking. You know, those are the moments where they took the, um, the, his mustache off. Other than that, I love what they, everything they did with the character. Um, the one thing I'll say, and this was more towards my criticism of Danny Elfman, and if you guys have been listening to the DC Films podcast, you guys know how um, very livid I've been about the whole Danny Elfman thing. Um, I didn't like the score. Um, it, Junkie XL, I think, should have stayed on as the composer. I, I know it wasn't his decision to obviously be fired, um, Danny Elfman was not a good choice. Um, there were a couple of mo scenes in the movie where I did like the score and a certain emotional moments, and, I, and those some of my, my some, some of my favorite emotional moments within the whole entire DCEU. But as far as score goes, it was mediocre. I just it sucks because this is Justice League. This is like the whole buildup of this entire universe up to this point, and this is the movie I've been looking forward to for like a decade of my whole like nerd life. And for the score, it just like it just felt like a generic Marvel score, to be honest. And for me, as a DCEU fan, it's such we've had great scores in Man of Steel and Batman v Superman and even Wonder Woman. And I understand, you know, Hans Zimmer said he was retired from superhero movies and that's fine. Junkie XL should have been the guy. He was the guy. But as soon as Joss Whedon came in, he booted him out to get in Danny Elfman. And I think that was a really stupid decision because I feel like with Junkie, he would have had those themes from Man of Steel in there. And that's the unfortunate thing that this is kind of a spoiler, kind of not. They really didn't utilize much of Hans Zimmer's theme at all. Like, there were some themes in there that are familiar for DC fans of these characters, but Hans Zimmer's theme was almost completely absent from the movie, and it sucks, because especially for, like, Superman's return to the movie, it's not there, and it, I was looking forward to that. At least that one moment when I thought it was going to happen, and it didn't, it sucked. The, it just, the score, I just wish the score was better, and it's not, the score doesn't break the movie for me. I just wish that it was a better score, but other than that, again, the story itself, I thought it was, it was a simple story, but I really enjoyed it. Um, there's a lot, a lot of Easter eggs, two end credit scenes or post credit scenes. One, I would say one is like a mid credit scene. Um, if you're a comic book fan and you're fans of these characters, it's really just a fun post credit scene. I really, really enjoyed it. And then the final end credit scene, which everyone's been talking about was awesome in all of the best ways um it teased something i wasn't sure they were, they were gonna do but they they teased it big time um i can't i'm not gonna spoil it i'll go into that in my spoiler review whenever i do that and then next week when we do the whole spoiler podcast just everyone in the podcast is disgusting our thoughts on the movie um it was an awesome and credit scene just to say um so to overall wrap up my thoughts on the movie i I loved it from start to finish. Again, it has its flaws. It's not 
Batman v Superman or um, Man of Steel level quality for me. But for me, as a DCEU fan, that's kind of a, kind of a hard, high bar to read, especially when this movie was already... For me, I knew that it was going to be as layered as those other two films. Um, I still love it nonetheless. A great entry in the DCEU. I'm not sure where I'm going to rank it right now. I might have to see it another time, one more time just to see how it is uh, um, compared to the other DCEU movies. But it's definitely up there. It's definitely a great superhero film. Um, I loved it, and I just want to say, you know, thank you, Zack Snyder, for giving us this. I know Zack had a really rough year with losing his daughter and just, just everything he's been through between all the, the fan hate towards the guy and all the terrible, terrible things people said about him. The guy doesn't, doesn't deserve any of it. Um, and if Zach, there's a very small percent chance he might be watching this, thank you for this movie. It was awesome. Um, any flaws I had were not related to you at all. It was related to, honestly, to Josh stepping in. And I understand the situation because of losing his daughter. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, thank Zach for giving us this movie because I thought it was well worth the wait. Um, I just wish it was a little longer because I'm, I'm spoiled by Zack Snyder's movies and them being like two, two hours and 25 minutes or more. Or in Batman Zero Man being three hours. Um, I mean, I'm a little spoiled that way. Um, but with that being said, I think that's going to be it for me. Um, I did my whole review on Tumblr, if you guys want to see that. Um, more or less the same thing that I said here. All, all the characters were great, like I said. All the supporting cast was great. Um, I, w I was really excited to see what they were able to set up in a lot of these characters' stories. Um, especially with seeing like Henry Allen and Barry Allen's relationship and Mira and... Arthur's relationship and getting more backstory of you know Arthur a little bit. I, swear I want to see more of these characters. That's the one thing I could walk out saying. Um, I can't wait to see all these characters back again, um, especially you know with Wonder Woman two coming out in a couple of years, um, and then you know, Aquaman coming out next year. So Shazam, all these movies. I can't wait to see all of them. So that being said, again, that's gonna be it for me. So until next time, guys. Have a good one.